Working. Ah. Turn yourself on. Oh, now I'm on. I, was I can't hear you. Wow. Unmute. No, I am unmuted. No, no, no. Oh, I didn't have my speakers on. Oh. <laughs> We're probably going to have to do a couple of takes of this. So yeah. remember what you're wearing. Good okay. idea. Good plan. Yeah. We can just edit this if we, you know, anything up. Should we be swearing though? No, really? I, I learned how to bleep things out. So if I say something incredibly stupid, like, you know, I can just bleep that out. Or if I say, we'll bleep that out. Okay. Cool. So I've also done an opening slide for this. Oh, cool. I mean, it still needs to be edited. Can you just send me your headshot and I'll put it in? I just put in I'll... a shot of Kerry Ann Kennelly just as oh, a placeholder. Could, could I elect to just keep a bit of the old Kerry? I didn't mean to call her old. Oh, she's old. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we'll do it properly. We'll do it properly. Okay. Yeah. So we've got the title we agreed on: a qualitative investigation of autistic friendship in matched neurotype dyads. An insignificant case study, N equals two, but I realised it should just be dyad. And yes. if it's one dyad, does that mean it's N equals one? Yeah, N equals one, one dyad. I'll fix that too. Yeah, good idea. We should probably establish that we are actually friends. If we're I have proof. This. I don't know if you have proof. I've got this. It's, I'm either a stalker or your friend. That's the Sisterka Snow Globe, and that was limited edition, believe it or not. So limited. Yeah. And for good reason. They only made six <laughs> of those <laughs> when I specifically ordered six of those. <laughs> <laughs> but I found a, um, a BuzzFeed quiz that I thought we could do. Can you see that? I do like the multiples of three. Yeah, so we can find out if we're 33, 66 or 99% close. Yeah. According Everyone to, wins. To Jasmine Naha. She's authored a, quite a few validated assessments, I think. I mean, you'd know more as a psychologist. Obviously. Oh, definitely. She's yeah. one of the leaders in the <laughs> field. The first question is, how do you feel if you and your friend are sitting in silence? Okay, so I'm a bit confused here because the silence is great. That's comfortable and I don't mind it. But I... I generally feel super uncomfortable and awkward as a baseline. Let's yeah. go with comfortable and that. let's assume. In the absence of it's preferable. Yeah, so exactly. We'll go it's comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. You have food poisoning and feel kind of gross. How do you describe it to your friend? Oh, there's no option for lots of swears. And there's no option either for sending photos with graphic Means. detail. Yeah. <laughs> So let's go yeah. with messages explaining it in graphic detail because I think that's the closest. Your friend is making a pretty bad decision. What do you do? That describes our friendship, doesn't it? Yeah, we just um, support each other in poor decision making. I've told you before when I thought something is terrible. Oh, no, I would absolutely say that's a terrible idea. Remember Especially that time you, you sent me that piece of writing and I told you how much I hated it? Yes, and I said thank you heaps for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate your honesty. So yeah. I think if you're making a bad decision that, that was arising from some faulty thinking or incorrect information, I would definitely tell you that. Ask them what the hell, the hell yeah, they think they're doing, sure. yeah. The main activity you and your friend do together. <laughs> I'm actually genuinely stuck on this one. I know. Often I am watching TV while I'm texting you. Often Jack's got the TV on while I'm texting you. The yeah. last time I, I actually saw you was December 2020. Mm -hmm. It's been 19 months. Yeah. Do you miss me? No. Nah. <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> it's the me. same. Yeah. Exactly. How well do you know your friend's family? I've met your parents once, but I'm friends with your mum on Facebook. Have you met my family? Not in person. Your mum follows my Instagram and used to like a lot of my posts. She's stopped recently. I'm not sure what to make of that. Oh, um, she's gone off you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't like my Amaryllis Lily. I mean, I've interacted with her I'm on friends Facebook. With your brother. We have a group chat. Because we know each other's immediate family. Yes. You've met my, my partner once. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I think we're heaps close. What are the options? I've met their me immediate and extended families. Yeah, that's just it. Oh, yeah. Facebook counts. Go. Can you tell your friend all your secrets? People have secrets? 
Apparently. I think I tell them absolutely everything. I probably tell you more than you want to know about a lot of things, actually. Yeah, there's no going back on something. <laughs> but yeah, we'll go with that. Would you feel weird having a nap at your friend's house? If I was tired, that'd be fine. As long as your house. Another, yeah. like as long as it wasn't like an acquaintance's house. If you need a as... nap, you need a nap. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. To what extent do you talk about your sex lives? It's not as interesting as writing an article together. No. So I would say sometimes. If, if it's necessary. Oh, if it's necessary, yeah. If something interesting has happened, interesting. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. But if there's a new article that's been released that's more interesting, then we'll talk about that. Did I, I send you the health outcomes one about yes. <laughs> health I love that. That's mm. made my day. I mean, you haven't been very helpful with phones. There was that time when we were staying in the hotel together for the conference. The phone rang and oh, you didn't answer it. You, you filmed think- my reaction. Gin soaked thing, <gasps> but clothes not so much. Why is the phone ringing? Uh, but there was another time in the, in the same hotel room. I made a phone call to get waffle. us dinner. We had waffle fries. Uh, two serves of waffle fries. Thank you. So that's a good friendship because I love that video. Do you ever have deep and meaningful conversations at 3 a.m.? I need my sleep. I do have you on the setting you can get through my do not disturb. I mean, that's closeness. I thought of a thing that demonstrates closeness that you don't even know about. (laughs) And I'm going to tell you now because you you just love surprises. For a while, you were the beneficiary of my super. Oh, that is a thing. For a while, you could have been very slightly wealthier (laughs) if I was dead. Oh, I think I would be more sad. I'm upset a bit, yeah. We have deep and meaningfuls, but not as late as 3am because sleep is important. Your friend gets a haircut that they've realised doesn't suit them, but they want a second opinion. What do you say? I'd tell you it didn't suit you if it didn't. You often tell me my hair's terrible. So yeah, I above tell... three. Which above three? Above <laughs> I five. mean, I do like, can we go with that? Because I like multiples of three. Wait, that's our result. We're 99% close. I'm surprised. Oh, there you go. This reminds me of when we spent quite a long time Mm. writing an article on friendship and how to be friends to an autistic person and then realised it was just common sense stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like learn about your friend, be honest with your friend, be respectful, winner. We're hoping that by presenting our friendship, people will go, oh. That's how you do it. Yeah. Yeah. So 99% we have shown that autistic or not, our friendship cuts the mustard. It it hits the markers of a close friendship, a good friendship, whatever that quiz was actually getting at. Seem to be thinking honesty was a good thing, which is interesting because a lot of people don't respond well to honesty when you actually put it into practice. Mm. We've both learned this. Yes. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the time that I did. Yeah, me too. Since it's a case that we should do the story of our friendship. Yes. 2019. Yes. It was early to... I need to go to the toilet. (laughs) Music. (laughs) Interception. Okay. You're back. And I realised while I was on the toilet, we need to go back to 2018 because that is when I first heard of you. Ah, okay. I got my hot off the press um, DSM-5 diagnosis. So it says, and I quote, I recommend a psychologist who has a very good understanding of ASD to aid Abby's understanding of how the traits relate to her experience and to develop healthy coping strategies. I recommend Dr. Erin Bullis. And then what happened when you were looking at that recommendation? Well, I looked at your website and I didn't like your logo very much. And I didn't really like the look of you either. (laughs) Just fair. And then I heard just on the grapevine that you weren't taking the client. So I thought, well... Not going to bother with a phone call. Yeah. Done. So that was that over, just just yeah. to be clear. Is it then the psychologist who you chose instead of me?
you had posted that you had gone to see Douglas, the Hannah Gadsby show. That's right. Yeah. And I commented about how I was seeing it that night. And, you know, I probably said something very clever. Oh, what? Made you think. Oh. She's a keeper. And then you commented it on it again the next day and said, so what do you reckon? And then I think from there it sort of went into direct messages. Yeah. I mm. think it did, yeah. And then the direct messages just kept going and we very I, quickly were talking quite a bit. I knew quite a lot about you before I even knew that you lived in the same city as me and that we actually lived around the corner from each other. That's true. Didn't know that I was the person in the diagnostic report. I, I, re- I do remember thinking, should probably actually kind of meet this person properly, but you agreed. I did after going, oh, Face to face catch up and then going, <laughs> probably a good idea. But I, you, you said, oh, I'm not available for the next two weeks. I'm <laughs> thinking, what? What do you do? Do you have like netball twice a week? Yeah. And then we had trouble with the parking. You, do you remember the parking sign? Oh, yes. The confusing parking sign. But yeah, oh, we, did, we did catch I, up and we were there yeah. for a while. Long enough for a helicopter to land. Well, then we decided to share a a hotel room in Singapore, obviously. Yes, Singapore was very early on in our friendship. I was booked in to share a hotel room with two other people and you were booked in to share with someone else who you also not met. I'm really good with personal safety. One of the things we're going to do in Singapore was suss out collaborators. And how did we go with networking when we were Very bad. One of the people we we were thinking about meeting was Jack Den Houting, who is my betrothed now. Yes. That didn't go well. I think it was actually suggested to Jack. They come and talk to us and Jack took one look at us. He went, no, thank you. (laughs) I walked over to say hi, but Abby's face said, so I kept walking. I probably just would have been staring blankly at the wall behind Jack's head, thinking about something. We started drafting our first paper together. We did. Our first article together on the flight. Yeah. Yes. Um, the, the guy next to us was really pleased by that conversation happening all the way from Adelaide to Singapore. We sent that to the conversation. I think we'd also said, submitted it to a journal who rejected it as well. We pretty much had a daily thing of... Um, Who's rejected us now? Yeah. You. <laughs> you had also thought, maybe we should do psychology today. They were like, great, do you want your own sort of dedicated sort of column blog thing that you can just write whatever you like? Well, we're like, uh, uh, yes. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've only got one idea right now, but I think we can come up with more. And we did. We did. We should probably talk about what's unique about our friendship. Oh, our dogs are friends. They are. They love each other. I think they're probably missing the in-person contact. Yeah, they probably are. Oh, we have a shared imaginary friend. We do. How's Brian going? How did we get an imaginary friend? I'm not sure. I think it started with us just being a bit ridiculous. I think making jokes at your brother's expense. I'd just like to make it known that I didn't consent to any involvement in any of this. Brian forged my signature on the release form. Well, I I say forged. He drew a To be fair, it was quite good it's quite detailed people say autistic that we have no imagination but i mean this demonstrates some imagination i think so i mean brian is the seediest person you could possibly imagine he gets arrested pretty regularly yeah he's died a number of times yeah um yeah yeah he lived he lived under your house for a while, didn't he? In the murder room, yeah. Yeah. He pretty much just lives between my place and Liam's place. He travels between the two states on a ride on mower. He obviously doesn't have a licence. Not that that would stop him. Occasionally visits you to steal gold from your teeth. Should really stop investing in gold teeth. He's become such a character that claimed to my friend Ruth that Brian's not real. Okay. Oh. Because she had seen stuff mentioned about Brian, just assumed that it was a person. I was like, no. <laughs> I honestly thought Brian was a real person. When I was growing up, I always wanted an imaginary friend and was sad I didn't have one. And now, <laughs> now as an adult, I get my imaginary friend and shared, you know, with you and my brother. Yeah, so that it's not so much upkeep. <laughs> That's right, because I don't have the cognitive resources to be doing all the imagining. 
So I think mm. it really helps to share it between the three of us. Yeah, and I've got a better crawl space that he can live in. What makes our relationship particularly autistic? So our relationship doesn't adhere to socio-cultural norms in that we do tend to just prefer a bit of a text-based chat rather than necessarily face-to-face. The honesty over social niceties. Um, yes you actually sort of openly encouraged me to move into state away <laughs> it's true well, I mm-hmm. thought it was it was objectively the best thing for you and it's been fine really nothing much has changed with you moving from around the corner to interstate no nothing much at all we really became quite close through only mainly texting and I think we know each other better now three years later yeah we know each other better but I don't think I necessarily feel closer to you now no we we were close very quick there was it we was just like decided was like, then <laughs> yeah that's what it was like we were going to be like, friends now yeah And then full trust, full closeness, we're friends. We saved a lot of time. I mean, really, we're about eight years into a friendship by other people's standards. Oh, is this like a dog years thing? I think so. Like eight years into a non-autistic relationship. But our friendship is probably a bit different to the mainstream idea of friendship. If I uploaded a profile pic, would you comment, boom, baby? (laughs) Oh, I, no. I don't think you've ever called me a sexy no. no. I think we could say that with 100% confidence. I don't feel like I need to bolster your self-esteem by commenting on your sexual attractiveness in public forum. I don't feel like that would bolster my self-esteem. <laughs> it would just be quite weird, I think. It'd feel a bit creepy, wouldn't it? It would be creepy. Yeah, I mean, what was the last thing you commented on on my Facebook? <laughs> a selfie of me on... I think FaceTime, playing Beat Saber with your brother and your family. You wrote, it's like Abby never left SA. And I commented, I haven't left SA. I just told you I did. So I don't have to see you in person. Jack and I have been living in Coro this whole time. We have dinner with your brother and parents every Friday night. What was my response? Thank you for so much for sparing me the in-person contact. I've never loved you more than how much I love you in this moment. Hashtag boss babe. (laughs) <laughs> what does boss babe mean? I don't know. I don't know. It's a thing that people say. Oh. I don't really know. Do you, do you think you're better at friendships now than you were in, earlier in your life? Oh, absolutely. I think I'm better at friendship definitely in the last few years and then even more so since knowing I'm autistic Yeah, just leaning into that. When I say much better at them, I think a lot of people would probably argue I'm much worse <laughs> at them. <laughs> but, but I'm, much better at them in terms of having more meaningful friendships for me. I just realised I never reciprocated the question and whether you feel you have better friendships now or whatever. I think these days I'm going for quality over quantity. Mm -hmm. That's what's changed for me and I think I care less about what people think. Yeah. And, I mean, maybe that's an ageing thing. I think as you get older you care less about what people think. Mm -hmm. But I think it's also part of the process of, trying to unravel some of that camouflage years and years of layers I don't I don't think we'll, we'll completely unwrap that past the parcel um to find the real prize <laughs> we'll just get like you know the consolation prizes between the layers um, but they usually get better as like of more value but as you get closer to the oh do they just like the, the paper color changes so you go get from newspaper to the last few are actually proper wrapping paper and better gift oh did you not get invited to birthday parties as a child one of the things that's been i think a really helpful thing in our friendship has been because we both were formally identified as autistic at around the same time within six to 12 months of each other we both kind of went through that post-diagnostic process together yeah a lot of processing through our text messages and writing articles together even was a really helpful thing in doing that the processing and the unraveling and the and noticed that to 
together our views around things have changed a bit and our conceptualization of things I think we've been able to sort of unpack what is our personal experience because of different family backgrounds or whatever or just unique circumstance and what it means to be autistic a lot of things that we've just sort of taken for granted on being able to sort of talk really freely we've gone oh that's that's something that other people do or that's something that we both do and nobody else does (laughs) I don't think there's been a shift in our friendship but I think there's been a shift in our collective thinking around things and our stance on things and I suppose where we sort of situate ourselves politically around things yeah I think we've both grown quite positively in our own identities so I'm sort of trying to think of literature that talks about sort of late diagnosis and the need for connection to community and um, some sort of like post-diagnostic support happening um, and that you know that's something that the autistic community can provide and I think that's something that we've been able to provide for each other to some extent like just sense of connectedness and being able to kind of like explore Mm. what it means to be autistic and autistic culture together in in a way that is really safe I think as a young person I didn't feel particularly competent at connecting and I'd feel like I had connected and then realized I hadn't and that fear of sort of loneliness or being alone developed as I got older and I felt less and less competent at connecting but I've realized now that I'm actually really good at connecting we've got a really strong connection and it's I think one of the big differences is that I've got quite an unwavering trust in that connection Mm -hmm. I know there's things that could screw it up murdering is, is bad yeah just don't do it I think one of the strengths of our relationship is that I know I can screw it up and we can move past it yeah which allows me to be more me I think absolutely and I think we've talked about this in chat thread recently I think but we about how for example we're having the exchange of messages and someone puts something that maybe is a bit more emotional and the other person doesn't immediately give an emotional response and perhaps carries on with that other <laughs> topic of conversation for a bit we don't take that as meaning that the other person doesn't care about the thing we understand it's probably just we haven't transitioned our yeah. mind okay, or that we we're in a headspace where we're just not able to process that at that time your answers start becoming shorter or you're not responding to messages as much I think I hope Abby's okay she seems overwhelmed the other thing we talked about was trust in sharing things about each other that there's a trust that when we tell the other person something and we need to to trust that the other person will do the right thing mm-hmm. with that and make the right choices around that there's nothing really that we sort of outright better each other from ever telling anybody ever well we do have the hashtag dench we do how did we miss dench till this point and then often a little gif of judy dench dench being short for confidential so how do we end this just hang up yeah that's what we usually usually hang up on me all right yeah yeah i just hang up on you in the middle of a sentence yeah pretty much usually that's i'm just talking about something i'll just hit the end me it's worked well yeah we've probably got enough to edit together i reckon i meant our friendship oh yeah that's all right (laughs) 